please make sure you install Zoom through the official website. On today's seminar, we also broadcast live on our YouTube channel on YouTube slash Venus Accounting. At this time, I would like to welcome Mr. Gato Suprianto, PhD, as Dean of Faculty of Economics and Communication, Venus University. Please welcome Mr. Gato Suprianto. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Agustino Swinoto or Ino, uh, for the opportunity. Um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning, selamat pagi semuanya. A very warm welcome to all participants of the seminar series held by Accounting and Finance Department, Venus University and Tuanku Abdurrahman University College, Malaysia. A big thank you as well, especially to today's speaker, Dr. Kwek Chung Ling from the Department of Management, um, who are going to share his insightful idea about research methodology. First and foremost, uh, we are very grateful to the Almighty God, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, that because of His blessings and guidance, we can participate in this wonderful event. Despite the current pandemic and surrounding issues uh, with the situation right now. I also thank the committee who has done a tremendous job in organizing this event. This include Ibu Dr. Aryanti Puspo Kusumo and Dr. Mo Yi Chin, who has been collaborating very well in um, realizing this wonderful seminar. And also definitely, um, I also want to thank on the committee from accounting and finance department from both universities. A brief mention about Faculty of Economics and Communication, Venus University. So under the faculty, um, we have accounting department, whereby in this accounting department, we have five different programs across four different campuses in Jakarta and Greater Jakarta area. We have accounting program. We also have accounting technology in Bekasi campus. We also have finance regular program as well as finance international program with a double degree. The accounting and the finance program is one of the oldest program um, was established back then in 1996. And currently we have more than 2000 active students uh, in Venus University and more than uh, 60 faculty members. Speaking about students and educations, I think during this uh, difficult period where stay at home is the best course of action, leveraging um, our knowledge is the best option to make the most of our time. We can call it investing more in ourselves. And I do believe that these three series of seminar um, discussing about issues in research methodology, decision making in a certain business environment, and the impact of COVID-19 in financial reporting can help us to give an idea on how to stay productive and preparing ourselves in navigating the difficult situation now and then. Definitely not to mention that we will get insightful information and idea from international perspective, from our counterparts, um, from Malaysia, and hopefully this will broaden our horizon on how to navigate the current problems. Last but not least, I'm hoping that the collaboration between Venus and Tarsi can continue to evolve and improve in the future. I wish you guys uh, to have a very productive and insightful seminar. Thank you. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay at home. Back to you, Paino. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gato Suprianto, for the opening. And now it is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Mui Yinchin as Deputy Dean Faculty of Accountancy, Finance and Business, Tunku Abdurrahman College University. Please welcome Dr. Mui Yinchin. Okay, good morning everyone. I am uh, Chin Mui Yin. All right, my surname is Chin. 
All right, I am from uh, Tunku Abdul Rahman University College from the Faculty of Accountancy, Finance and Business. It is the great pressure uh, of the Thai UC to have this collaboration with Venus University. We have already organized some webinar before and it is very happy and excited for us to have a series of uh, webinar from today until uh, this coming Saturday. And we would like to have more collaboration between uh, BINUS and TAIUC in other aspects between, uh, uh, besides uh, this webinar, we can extend our collaboration in terms of students exchange, staff exchange, research, or many more competition and other things so that both of our students can benefit from our collaboration. And this collaboration will bring a fruitful result, not only for our students, but also for our academics. And we hope that this webinars, uh, this three days webinar series will be a successful one. And everyone that participate in this webinar series can um, bring back a fruitful knowledge and also uh, gain some information from there. And I wish everyone the best. Stay at home and stay healthy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Chin Yin, for the opening. Moving right along, it is now my pleasure to introduce our moderator, Dr. Heni Kurniawati. Dr. Heni Kurniawati obtained her diploma for degree from Sekolah Tinggi Akuntansi Negara or Indonesia State College of Accountancy and her master degree from University of Illinois at Urbana Camp Campaign, United States and her PhD at Ghent University, Belgium. She is a lecturer at the Department of Accounting and Finance of Bina Nusantara University, where she teach corporate reporting, auditing, corporate governance, and research methods in bachelor and master degree. Her research focus on the role of auditing and corporate reporting within the context of emerging markets, especially Indonesia. Some awards that she received are LPDP awardee for mm -hmm. doctoral degree program and base paper on international conference on mm -hmm. accounting and finance of Jakarta in 2018 mm -hmm. for foreign ownership and board membership from developed versus emerging countries and auditor choice evidence of Indonesia. So, please welcome Dr. Heni Kurniawati. Uh, thank you, Augustinus Winoto, for such a lovely introduction of me. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to ha uh, have you all here, uh, professors, the dean, and also the lovely students. Uh, today we are joining here uh, in the condition of pandemics. I hope all of you are uh, healthy and in and, and a good condition. Uh, as we know that research in academic area is very important, both for students and also for uh, lecturers and also the professors, of course. Uh, however, sometimes uh, we are desperate because we don't have, we don't know how to find a good topics for our research, or maybe we, we know uh, we have a good topics, but we don't know how to execute it well. And uh, today we are happy to have uh, Dr. Kwek Chun Ling as our speaker here, who will uh, share and give insight on how uh, to have a good topics for research and also uh, ha uh, how we can execute it well so we can have a very good research. Let me introduce Dr. Uh, Kwek Chun Ling. Dr. Kwek Chun Ling is currently uh, the Associate Professor for the Department of Management, Faculty of Accountancy, Finance and Business at the Tunku Abdul Rahman University College or TARUC. Dr. Kwek is an experienced academicians and researchers with over 18 years of teaching and research experiences. 
prior joining the academic career, uh, Dr. Quack was an industry practitioner. And throughout his academic career, Dr. Quack has supervised and graduated many PhD, DBA, and MBA postgraduate uh, business students. Dr. Quack has been appointed as an external uh, examiner by the MIT University Australia, Charles Sturt University Australia, Federation University Australia, uh, Southern Cross University Australia, University of Newcastle Australia, and Asia Pacific University of Innovation and, and Technology Malaysia to examine their students' doctorate, PhD, and DBA thesis. Dr. Quack uh, was also appointed by uh, the Sheffield Hallam University, United Kingdom, to supervise a PhD student in Malaysia, and the PhD student has just graduated from the program. Dr. Quack has written and published 50 technical peer-reviewed journal and conference articles. Dr. Quack has also published various books and book chapters in both English and Chinese languages. He has constantly uh, provided research and data analysis workshop to the postgraduate research students. Dr. Quack is also uh, the organizer and chairperson for the three consecutive years of the inaugural management symposium for the Faculty of Accountancy, Business and Finance at RUC. Uh, the research interest of Dr. Quack is in the fields of marketing and research methodology. Okay. For our uh, events today, we will uh, separate by two sessions. The first session will be a presentation by Dr. Quack, and then the second session, the participants uh, can ask questions in the questions and answers uh, sessions. Uh, we will have the questions and answers in the, the second session, and participants can uh, ask through the chat box or also can uh, uh, raise the hands in the participants list. So uh, the committee can uh, help us to uh, point out who will ask first uh, to uh, Dr. Quack. Okay, uh, now we will start uh, this, the first session, the presentations by Dr. Quack. Uh, Dr. Quack, uh, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, okay. Now I'd like to share my PowerPoints to you. My today topic is about current issue in research. Okay, I believe most of the students, either undergraduate students, master and PhD students, facing some difficulties in identifying topics. Although the topic has been identified, they still do not know how to find a good research questions. Therefore, uh, today's presentations will help give you ideas how to come up with good research questions by identifying a good research gap. As far as we know, research gap is not an easy way to develop and it needs a lot of creativity and skill. Therefore, today's presentation, I will give you some understanding what it means research gap, okay, and what is a and what is their role, and different techniques, different types, okay, to identify the research gap. Let me share the screen. Okay. So the slide about roughly 30 pages, right? So the current issue in research methodology, I'm Dr. Kwek from Tung Po Raman University College, Malaysia. Today topics, it's about research gaps, okay. Okay, what I mean research gap? Research gap basically is you try to identify and challenge the current understanding or assumption of the theories. Before I go to detail, I want to tell you what theories. Theories basically is a reasoning process. 
that developed by the scholar to help us to understand okay, the root cause, the determinants of the phenomenon. But theories will be evolved from time to time due to the identified gaps. Therefore, any theories was built by a few assumptions. I will go to detail, okay, and give example in the later parts. So in order to identify a good research gap, if we can, if we can challenge assumptions, then we can come up a new way to develop a new theories. Therefore, appear to be a central ingredient in the development of more interesting and influential theories within management studies. Besides beside identifying changing assumptions, it's known as research gap, we also can look into research gap, okay, also refer to something incomplete or has overlooked, okay, as a perspective in understanding of a particular phenomenon. Mm. And this incomplete and overlooked area need to be filled and need to be conducted research by researchers. The second understanding what I mean research gap. Third research gap understanding is on those the researchers have done a lot of uh, systematic literature review, but they still cannot draw a very conclusive conclusion. The, the conclusion is limited. And this is also known as research gap. I will share an example later with you why is conclusion limited. Last point, the research gap might be further developed through, okay, through the stakeholder involvement in prioritizing into research needs. Research needs are those areas where the gap in the evidence, limited decision making, for example. Okay, we want to come out a decision, uh, we want to come out a solution to solve particular problems we found that we lack of certain information that related to particular stakeholders. And particular stakeholders need the input from that. And the research currently is not dwelt on that path. There is a require to do a research on that perspective. Now, we look into, although I understand the faulty many concept research gap, and why research gap become the picture? Because research gap is very important for researcher, researcher because it draws different perspective or uh, condition, okay? To understand the problem, understand the causes, understand the solutions, okay? It will help us to link to research practical gaps. So research gap basically is giving a reasoning, okay? To help you to find the reasoning from looking on different perspective. That it, this different perspective will enlighten us in terms of how to understand the problem and draft the solutions. Second point, researcher can construct innovative research questions based on the existing uh, literature, okay? So as you know that a good piece of work depends on how creative and critical of research question that need to be answered by the researchers. However, you know, the research questions depend on how skillful of the researchers to identify research gap. Therefore, okay, the innovative research gap might help to resolve the debates in the future, pro produce integration from different approach and challenge the assumption of those all believed. Okay. There are next up, there are different types of research gap. Okay. Today, I would like to look into four different approach, okay, starting from Jacob 2011. Okay, uh, under Jacob understanding, he developed six types of research problems. First is called provocative exceptions. Second, contradictory evidence, knowledge void. Fourth, action knowledge conflict. Fifth, methodological conflict. Sixth, theoretical conflict. Let us go to detail one by one with example. Number one, provocative exception. The provocative exception occur when a consistent and accepted conclusion is contradicted by the appearance of new findings, right? Okay, in this context, for example, right? We found that, for example, price affect purchase intention, for example, but some studies say that yes, it is affect purchase intention, some say no, okay? Then you find that something, then you discover new thing come out 
that is contradicting with what had been accepted in the past, then it means that there must have some called moderator take place. Okay, I've changed the whole process. So we want to really find out why the conventional uh, concepts or relationship have been under challenge with the new findings. Okay. Especially when you do a uh, medical research, especially when you do uh, research, medical research or business research, you can find a lot, due to the cross disciplinary uh, uh, approach in developing research question, a lot of new findings have, uh, have been start challenging the existing understanding in the past. Okay, second point called contractory evidence related to the provocation exception in when contract evidence can be mm -hmm. drawn across finding at the same time, right? So for example, you can do like cohort analysis, okay? Same topic, same uh, instrument, but when you conduct the research, you found that why the finding difference across different cohort with a similar background of respondents, similar scenario, then you might find a something unique interest to find out what is going on, okay? As, for example, you do a study in Malaysia, you start a study in, in Indonesia, you know, you found that uh, what is the uh, uh, internet addiction, in terms of topic internet addiction, but you found that the relationship, okay, contracting between two group of people, right? They are to find out, to discover more, either to qualitative or either to quantitative research. Then known it what, it's difficult to believe that a knowledge would exist today to an extent on any topic. The volume of research being conducted and reported must certainly be the highest level. In addition, it does not even consider the unprecedented availability of research from the field. Sometimes you can see, okay, in some research, okay, we have known it void and insufficient knowledge being known. For example, COVID-19 is a new things in current environment. So scientific researchers, scientists are developed a lot of understanding to understand the virus to understand uh, the root causes to understand the mutation of the virus as well so that they can understand how this thing came come in and how to come up with solution because it's new things right action knowledge conflict the action knowledge conflict focus on where individual professional behavior differ from their external behavior for example according according to the uh, knowledge Theoretically, people will try to buy a house because there is a uh, high speculation value in here. Dependent variable is which intention. The independent variable here will be speculation value or value appreciation. But however, we see that now after the COVID-19, the property price is going down. Okay, but the reaction to purchase is not there. So we want to know. According to theory, people are looking for the good location, people are willing to pay the lower price to buy the property, but look like it doesn't work. So as a professional, might require input from researchers to do a study on that. Okay. Might be the fighting might be conflict. Okay. The researchers say that if you implement pricing strategy, people will start buying a house. But when the developer implements the pricing strategy, it doesn't happen, right? Therefore, the developer might ask a uh, researcher why the thing doesn't work despite the core of research has been carried out, what are the factors affecting the intention, right? Okay, methodological conflict, okay? Now I'm looking to the contract. The use of one or another research methodology might help, might also help provide a source of problem. For example, right? Or those we use, uh, for example, you do quantitative research, quantitative research. We found that, right? A lot of people do p-value, okay? To conclude the relationship, okay? But however, p-value itself is not a good final judgment because p-value is subject to inference by big sample size. If sample size is very big, the p-value approaching less than 5%, therefore the, the signal will be, the output will be significant. But you go further, you, when you do a t-value, uh, when you go to complete interval, when you go to 
draw like, for example, interaction blocks for motivation effect. When you go to do uh, effect size, power analysis, you find a different answer, right? So therefore, when you do any methodology test, okay, such as using the data analysis, be careful, certain statistics, okay, might be insufficient. You need to use a combination of various statistic technique to support your uh, finding, okay? Then, let, let me go down, huh? okay. Next point will be theoretical conflict. Huh? Here conflict means that people are challenging your theory now. Okay, your theories might not be sustained. For example, as known that in economics, right, uh, we have theory of absolute advantage. We have theory of comparative advantage. Due to the weakness of the theory, uh, theory of absolute advantage, uh, Professor Ricardo come out with theory of comparative advantage. Okay, this one we go very detailed when it comes to problemization. After Jacob, uh, second scholar, called Miller, Block, and Kranz in 2015, also developed, okay, based on the previous work as mentioned in this here, right? Miller, Block, and Kranz proposed six types of research gap by combining the framework developed by Robinson, okay, uh, ETL 2011, and theory related research problem from Jacob 2011. So he restructured into six methodological conflict, contractory co evidence, non avoid action, non conflict, evaluation work, and theory application. Okay. As I told you, metal con conflict, it can become from qualitative, it can become from quantitative, depend whether you quality or quantity. Okay. For example, a lot of students do case study, qualitative case study, but they ignore the process called uh, data. Uh, transcribing and verification from uh, interview B. When they call it data, they immediately do the uh, data uh, transcribing, data analysis, data coding. Uh, they forget the steps. For example, when you do pilot test, pilot test uh, for, for qualitative is case execution versus pilot test for quantity are slightly different. And the criteria and con requirement and uh, to check on pilot test is not complete, right? Therefore, this need to be confirmed on that. Sometimes statistically, also part of methodology conflict also, okay? So the statistics should not you, for example, why the R square value so low, but and power analysis so low, why you still accept the conclusion, right? So we are, need to challenge all what's going on here. Contrary evidence, result from study allowed for conclusion in their own right, but currently when they examine it in a more extract point of view, it means that the study is not universally applicable. Okay, then we have to question, okay, what is going on? Okay, now what desire uh, research finding do not exist. So it means that you, at this moment, for example, COVID-19, okay, in terms of solution of the vaccination, okay, the finding is not available, it's still in progress. Okay, so, and therefore we do not know whether the formula vaccinations and the disease mutations, how they work together. Action, knowledge, conflict, professional behavior or practice devoted from research finding and are not covered by research. It's a new area. For example, nowadays, a lot of students use online learning. As we know that online learning is not something new, but it's quite a new practice, okay, in particularly in some country, like developing country. So we have to find out why it's going on and what is the problems and what is the solution need to develop, okay, to enhance the effectiveness of online learning. Evaluation with research finding or population need to be evaluated and empirically verified, okay? So it means that you need to double check the findings of the existing uh, researchers to see whether, uh, okay, the finding is, acceptable, okay? When you do the systematic literature review, when you do meta-analysis, okay, your job is try to find out, okay, what is the, does the findings from various guru, okay? Are they consistent? Are they debate from each other, okay? And that's, okay. Next one is theoretical conflict, okay? 
Now, and after that, the third guru mouse also come up seven times with this gap. Okay, he tried to try to combine Robinson, Jacob, and Miller approach. So you know, uh, seven approach called evident gap, knowledge gap, predicate gap, mental gap, and predicate gap, theoretical gap. Okay, next we go to detail of previous gap. Okay, even gaps. Result from study allow for conclusion in their own rights, but are contrary when examined in a more extra point. Okay, so you got contradictory evident gaps, right? In here, for example, you found journal A. They say that there is a positive relationship between, uh, for, for example, uh, your price and purchase intention. But under the journal B, they say that price doesn't affect uh, purchase intention. Then you find there is a contradiction in the events. Okay, the relation is not sustainable. Then when you find out what is going on, okay, sometimes the event gap can also go beyond. Okay, just a statistical uh, 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 conclusion. Knowledge gap. Okay, desire research finding don't exist. Okay, practical knowledge gap, professional behavior or practice deviate from research finding and are not covered by researchers. Okay. Uh, this quite commonly when you do a consultancy, uh, when you do in the action uh, action based research, you can see the findings are quite different. And also, as you know that in practitioners in practical world, the different business scenario, different con business environments, the factors influencing the outcome will be various. Okay, and also subject to a lot of impact of compounding variable. Okay, uh, a lot of Okay, moderator and meeting and so on. Okay, methodology gap. A variation of research method is necessary to generate new insight or to avoid distorted finding. As you know that in, uh, in quantitative research, uh, some of the statistical tests is quite old and also under being challenged. For example, some students do that a mediation. They use still better than Kenny approach to test or mediation. But as we know that mediation have so many problems, have been challenged already, okay? So if you still use a uh, band can approach to do mediation as a methodology, then your findings will be, you, your finding might not provide a very solid insight and your finding will be distorted. In due respect, we might ask you to do a uh, macro process. We might ask you to do SCM, okay? Instead of a uh, conventional uh, band can approach. Same thing for p-values. Uh. So that's why as a researcher, as a, uh, at the same time, methodology gap also refer to, for example, a protocol, okay, including the criteria being used. I came across some students do methodology gaps, but the sample itself does not met with the problem under investigation. Okay. I also found that when they do the, uh, the protocol, sometimes incomplete. Okay. They try to mismatch different protocol, okay, from the uh, from the journal, but they ignore different protocol have their own unique objective and process. Okay, not just because of mismatch of matching to come out a complete so-called protocol. Okay, and breaker gaps research finding or proposition need to be evaluated and better verified. Okay, it means that the conceptual understanding is available but not yet verified through empirical testing. It's quite common, especially you found that some of the uh, proposition, some of the quality research. Okay have been articulated, okay, but not yet proven uh, under quantitative research, okay. So there is another gap that we want to study. And embryo gap normally appear quite substantially when the topic is very new and you go to a beginning of the exploration research to qualitative research, okay. But it does not mean that, uh, it does not mean that, um, okay, uh, sometimes because of industry very new, Okay, the evolution is very new. Okay, there's lack of uh, embryo study on that particular incident in the industry. Theoretical gaps, theory should be applied or to some research issue to generate new insight. There are a lot, there is lack of theory, does a gap exist? Sometimes we develop multiple theories, okay, based on qualitative research, for example, right? Okay, based on hyper, hyper uh, proposition. But as long as theory haven't uh, validated okay through developing conceptual framework 
been tested too quantitatively. So the theory is, sub, is still not yet solid. It needs to yet to go to validation. Okay. Then we the okay, let, next one will be uh, okay. Let me see how. Huh? Okay, now we do have okay. However, the above three guru had mentioned about the gaps, but Everson's uh, Sanders come out a very unique understanding of gap. What he what this professor say that this professor mainly from uh, Queensland, New South Queensland, they try to argue if you do a normal gap analysis. For them, they call gap spotting. Okay, it might not challenge the assumption of theory. We just primarily you applying the theories, extending the theories. Okay, so the break in of new discovery might be limited. Therefore, Everson okay try to come out two approach. One is gap spotting. One is problematization. Okay, these two approach. From that area, it's quite a high level of understanding. Okay. Okay. Gap spotting is quite common. Okay. Uh, it's quite similar to the three approach that I mentioned just now. Okay. So there are three. Okay. Bef under gas spotting, they got they got uh three basic modes. One confusion spotting, neglect spotting, application spotting. I'll go to detail of these three. And you found that most of journal they say they tell you oh, this study is lack of study, they neglect something. Okay, uh, this study is very uh, confusing. The finding is controversy. Uh, so these are quite commonly being used like confusion, spotting, and neglect spotting. And a typology assumption open for pronunciation. There are five types of typologies we go very detail, and it's quite high level of extraction. Okay. Let us uh, let us discuss. Okay, for the spot for the get spotting approach. Okay, okay, developed by Alberson. Researcher, researchers generate research questions by identifying or constructing specific gap in existing literature. Okay, uh, also say then what is different between research question? Since Alberson mentioned research question, but here you talk about research gap, actually. Under our mindset, okay, a good research question is built on a good gap identification. Therefore, I say that in order to do a, in other words, we're looking into how to define a good gap. So under gap spotting, same thing, they say that, okay, there are three uh, uh, identify and construct with specific gaps. Second point, researchers mainly try to identify or create gaps in existing literature that need to be filled. Okay, it's quite similar to the three professors in the past. Okay, gap spotting means that the assumption underlying existing literature for the most part remain unchallenged. Okay, very important here, as same in the old school of thoughts. Okay, gap spotting compared with the three previous approach, they seldom challenge the assumptions of the theories. I will go detail under problematization, what I mean, assumption of theories. Huh? And what they do is they mainly remain using the existing theory okay, to apply, to develop conceptual framework. And thus, the contribution of knowledge can be limited. Okay, that's why subsequently he uh, wasn't developed, uh, developed problematization, okay, go beyond the scale. Spotting. So next point. Okay. He mentioned that. Uh, he mentioned that. Okay. The content of constructive, complex, creative process. Something not be fixed. So why is very hard to develop research questions by I mean, a good research gap? Because Development at research gap is a very complicated process. It's a very creative process. You need to look for different anchor. You need to understand the, the ontology. Okay. You need to understand the school of thoughts. Okay. Over the years. Okay. In order to develop a very good research gap. So there are no one rule fix for all. There's something is ongoing process and it can be different in terms of complexity and size. Right. 
right? For example, one of my students do a topic called uh, okay, uh, online helpfulness. Okay, does this uh, comment given by online is it helpfulness not from the perspective of the receiver, from the perspective of the centers? It come out a very unique uh, gap dimension that is all depend on how truthful of the re receiver want to provide information to the uh, cent uh, centers, right? For example, your patient, right? You through online, you ask doctor of advice, but you dare not, you do not want to tell the full picture, right? Then the input from the doctor center will be affected. You affect the credibility, the, the richness of the information, then subsequently affect the quality of helpfulness through the online, okay? So the students work in different way. They don't look into source of information. They don't look into credibility of the doctors per se. Okay? They say that the uh, online helpfulness is a comprehensive ecology. You do, there are different stakeholders involved. There are different needs involved. So from that, they do a very creative process, work out the framework, okay? So that's why I say that when you do a uh, gap spotting, research element gap, okay, uh, you need to go beyond the box, huh? okay? Okay, and they find our constructing fairly narrow gaps to more significant gaps. Sometimes students have developed the gaps very narrow, but not significant. Okay, uh, it's very important to aware that okay, you need to uh, understand. Okay, you can develop a good gap, but the gap does not contribute. If you you can develop a good gap, you can develop a good gap, but once the, the but your gap doesn't contribute to understand the problems the gap will not be good in your research, okay? So very important, we have a lot of uh, consideration to consider, does your gap unique? Does your gap uh, solve, uh, bring in a new understanding? Does the gap contribute to new perspective and so on and so on? Before that, yes, your paper is good or paper not good and so on, okay? So you go to many rounds of revision. So under Everson for gas spotting, it come up with three things. Right, you look into okay, uh, confusion spotting, negative spotting, application spotting. Okay, you look on these three. Okay, I will go to one by one. What I mean, confusion, neglected, and application. And most of the uh, journal you can see that they are use a lot of confusion and neglected normally. Okay, for especially for for social science my business, okay? First, confusion spotting, okay? Basically, they, they identify the confusion part from the existing journal literature, okay? What mean confusion? Confusion part means competing explanation, okay? Competing explanation means what? In different way, number one, different relationship being identified or there are more than one approach to give the reasoning or the same reason given, okay, but the infinite, the explanation given, but the explanation is, is not solid, okay? So we call compete, a lot of competing explanation, okay? If you can, you can go to Albertson and uh, Sanders, this uh, article, they give you some uh, sources of readings, okay? You can download from uh, Google Scholar. So that's why when you do when we do the literature, when we do the uh, systematic review, literature review, we try to synthesize consolidating consolidating various uh, reasoning called epistemology given, okay, from the journal. Neglecting spot spotting, okay, it basically talk about lacking of previous research. Export, okay. There are two understanding what I mean neglect spotting. One is lacking of pre-research. One is one, the other one is exploring a new unknown territory. There are two different types of called neglect exporting.
okay the person bully you but no people talk about why i welcome you to bully me all right so to look into to look into a different perspective of argument okay then exploring unknown territory okay so overlook part from an existing research so based on this approach okay they look in what is overlooked in the past and they try to validate theory will be less will be received less attention so as i told just now when you do a normal gap analysis or gap spotting or neglecting spotting you are not sharing the assumption of theory most of the time you are using the theories most of the time many researchers right so as a as a students you, you must aware okay uh, before you adopt any theories to help you to do conceptual framework you must really understand that this theory is still valid okay not using a theory of psychology theory because some theories have been go to uh, for example, resource pay theory resource pay theory have go to multiple stage of evolution you cannot use the conventional, the first phase of first you no know, edition of the web resource theory, right? Because it have evolved. Same thing for innovation uh, theories have been evolved quite substantially over the years. Okay. So what the purpose is when you talk about neglecting spotting, you need to make a stand. Why you think this neglected area deserves to be investigated? You may you may make a compelling case for why it should be uh, investigated, rather than say this is no people study, therefore I study. Then ask next, ask the next question: Why you need to study? Okay, uh, a lot of students cannot make a compelling case for doing uh, research based on the argument of including spotting. Okay, a lot of people say that oh I do this this uh, spotting because it has commercial value and so and so on, but as a research we want to go beyond uh, practical contribution. We want also theoretical contributions. Huh? Okay, application spotting. This can be defined as shortage of real life evidence due to support those theory that have been studied by the researchers. So it means theory application. Huh? Okay, in the past we call theory uh, theory gap. Okay, so from the other point of view, a theory can be applied on different areas. Okay. And uh, by, uh, by applying different area, different uh, cont uh, uh, area or different field, you give a new understanding of the theories, okay? For example, I study about medical science, okay? The medical cognitive theory, okay? But when I apply under uh, anthropology or sociology, okay? It might give us a different understanding. Does the uh, human mindset to the medical cognitive theories will be influenced by the social values, okay? And under context of sociology, so we can able to see, okay? Does your body uh, connective ability uh, evolve together with the society? Okay. Next, uh, this is quite interesting. Okay, uh, this is quite high level. I'll go to very detailed and very slow. Okay. Problem dimension have been articulated as the prominence methods to annoy gaps so that you can do a very good research question. However, some, scho some scholar and even some journal write editors might not favor a problem dimension because it challenges the comfort zone of X. thing uh problem that thing is you are challenging the assumptions of the theories okay so when you challenge some of the theories so it means that you are you are required to develop a new interesting and influential theory okay so the whole concept of problemization is is not 
it's endeavor to know how and to what extent it might be possible to think differently. So it carefully is to keep out think differently. Okay. When you do a gap spotting, what you do is you normal you normally apply the theory. Okay. You think the theory can guide you to different conceptual framework. So you just never think. So you are think as a coherently. Okay. And just apply. When it comes to problematization, it's no, no, no. We cannot apply the theory. For the theory, you must see does the theory okay, sustainable or not? If it's really not sustainable, then why should you do theory? All right? So they, they, they probably will think differently. After I explain to you how to think differently under the five typology of problematization. Okay? So the key again, challenge those assumptions okay, of the existing theories. Okay, before you want to challenge the, any theories, okay, to develop a new uh, uh, research topic, you must know what type of assumptions does the, does it, what type of assumption embedded in the theories that you under investigation, right? For example, I give you an example, right? Okay, uh, this one will go to in how assumption challenge uh, the first type of origin later on. Can, how can this assumption to be identified, articulated, and challenged? So sometimes you need to go to uh, the, the theorists who develop, okay, the theorist, the guru itself, okay, who develop that particular theory, and what is the assumption behind that uphold him to do that kind of theories. Sometimes you can get from Google Scholar, sometimes you can go, go to original articles. The article can be very, very old, okay, uh, which developed by particular uh, school or thought or guru. So you need to, you need to have a skill set to, to find out the assumption first. Okay, there are five kind of five types of assumption. We talk at in house, root method four, paradigmatic, ideology and few. I will go to one by one in a very, uh, okay, good example. Okay, in how assumption, in how assumption. Okay, before I talk in how assum, before I talk about before I talk about in assumption, I want to go to example first. So then that easy for me to bring out the concept. So as you know that, as you know that, okay, uh, under leadership study, okay, there are different theories to ex explain why a particular person can become a leaders. Okay, okay. They are under reason, under rational, under rationality school of thoughts. Okay, they they all take trait theory. Trait theory say that what? Okay, a person need to be, can become a leader, provided the person has certain kind of attitude. Skill set, attitude, and personal traits. But uh, we know that a person can come either does not make, does not mean the person have a specific attitude, but because of the conti challenge, is it? Uh, it seems that Dr. Kua uh, has a technical problem. Maybe we can wait for a few minutes. Okay, welcome back, Dr. Uh, Kwek. 
Do you have any difficult technical problem? It's okay, can I? Can I? Yes, it is okay, don't worry. Okay, this I think is uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now, okay, I repeat, I go to, uh, again, the slide number one, talk about in-house assumption, okay? For in-house assumption, uh, you found that when you, in-house assumption means that we are challenging a particular theory before the theory cannot be used. Okay, I use the economic theory as well. Okay, in this PowerPoint slide, we say that leadership theory, which are using no, normally called trade theory, we say that a person can become a leader. Okay, because the person must have sufficient attitude, skill, knowledge, okay, to perform a leader. Okay, however, however, this theory was built on this assumption called attitude. If I want to challenge the theory, I say, no, the person cannot become, and the, the person does not rely on attitude to become a leader. It can be because of social context, okay? It because of contingency, right? Requirement, okay? Make the person become a leader, okay? Okay, for example, uh, for Malaysia, okay? Uh, two and a half years ago, we come to the chain government. The time is because of social context. Okay, then the new government was being elected two and a half years ago, not because of trade is theory of the leaders, but because of social context is more important affect the person become a prime minister. Okay, this in our assumption, we also can use economic theories. Okay, as you know that okay theory of absolute advantage say that okay. You can specialize in any production if you have absolute advantage in, in different aspects of productions. But this theory being challenged because they say what? Any economics require resources, require switching cost, okay? And okay, production cost, right? Therefore, uh, therefore, when you specialize in two productions, you might, you might ignore the uh, switching cost uh, production costs and so on. So this theory, after that being challenged by developing theory of comparative advantage by Professor Ricardo, okay? This one is economic theories. Group metaphors assumption. Group metaphor assumption is whereby you have to look into broader picture, broader picture. For example here, uh, I'll give example here. It is common to see organ as a culture in terms of a unity set, value, and belief. You found that most of the journal, they try to define culture, okay, as a unity set of value and belief. But as we know that culture is very diverse, okay, 
the, the concept of unity, unity of value is, might, not, might not exist at all, right? For example, you talk about, you, you, you go to US, right? They are multi-racials, multi-cultural society, right? They might not have a unity, okay, uh, value involved. So in the past, since we define culture as a unity concept, so we try to find out what factor contributing uh, culture, okay? Uh, assimilation in, for example, in Malaysia and US, UK. Since we use the same ontology to understand the culture without challenging the concept of culture, if you, therefore the output will be quite conventional, not so creative in terms of findings. But you argue this way, if we see culture as diversity and differentiation and fragmentation, then factor affecting culture in this context of differentiation, fragmentation, ambiguity and discontinuity, the factor affecting culture will be different from the existing journal. Okay? So they say that when you do root, root metaphor assumption, you must see the, the big picture rather the micro picture. Okay? So you are challenged, therefore, will give an innovative uh, reasoning subsequently to understand culture. Paradigmatics is talk about a little bit of understanding the linguistic, okay? Uh, you have, for it, it's talk about ontology, epistemology, and methodology. Ontology is talk about understanding the reality. It's epistemology talk about reasoning, reasoning uh, given. Okay, methodology talk about process of investigation. Okay, so in order to come out with a good research questions um, for trend parameterization, I give example here. Okay, in the past, we call professional competency. Uh, under, uh, under the rationalistic school, they say professional competency depend on two big entities. One is the attribute process by the worker. One is the workplace activity. Then we look into the real world. Profile competency, for example, you are the young graduates, you go to work, you have a lot of attribute, you are a very talented person and so on, uh, you can perform the activity, but you cannot communicate professionally with the, lead, uh, with the members in the organization, right? You do not know how to uh, so-called persuade your team members. You do not know how to work along the culture, okay? To, to exhibit your competency. So other school, I thought I said that, no, competence that does not consist of separate entity. Competency is a process. It's embedded in the process, okay? So we talk about professional competency, we talk about how the, pers how the person assume uh, own, contribute, uh, cons process his own attributes, okay? able to work along with the culture and the system to perform various activities that are supported by his relevant working experience. So from that, you can see, we see the perfect competency as a wholesome, as a wholesome, as a process approach by integrating various concepts, okay? Therefore, we need to develop, okay, a very solid conceptual framework to identify uh, the flow of the process competency, the component of process competency, the process of developing process competency, okay? To understand ontology epistemologies in depth. Therefore, then you can develop a good factor affecting professional competency. So in other words, you are challenging the understanding ontology, okay? Of professional competence, okay? In the past, most of the research try to see the concept, okay, uh, in a very so-called fragmented view, okay? It considers two separate entity, A plus B, B plus C. But nowadays, they say, uh, we should look beyond a fragmented approach. We can look into the process point of view, okay? Because all the components should be interact, interact with each component together to form a chain effect. Then the perfect competency is not only talk about you yourself able to perform, but are you able to carry out, to 
to help other people, to transform other people in the department to perform well is also considered professional competency. So that's why this uh, they talk about okay, paradigmatic assumption. Okay, that's why I say that when it comes to problematization, you need to think be beyond the box and you must able to see a uh, different view. Ideology assumption is quite interesting also. Okay, it basically you have to look into uh, political, moral, and gender-related assumptions uh, beyond the uh, beyond the basic uh, theoretical assumption. For example, I do a study on that. Okay, for example, why don't worker work harder? Okay, normally we as a uh, if you are the leader in organization, what you not you not you normal ask is when why people don't work harder as what we did in the past when we are young, right? When you see the young graduate like that, so. The young graduate, you, know, you should look into the different anchor. Why do people work as hard as they do? You see, or not? Okay, as a, as a, as a, okay, for example, now you are the leader in the organization. You try to complain why the young uh, graduate, young staff are not working hard as what you do. So, is there, why don't workers work hard, harder? You ask this question. But, but for the youngster, okay, they will ask different way. Why do people work as hard as they do in the past? Right? They ask the leader, why you do why you work as hard in the past in your young age? You see? So in other words, you look into two different kinds of ideology. One is ideology from the bosses, one ideology from the employees. Okay? But in other words, the factor affecting why people work as hard as they do versus why people don't work harder, there are two bipolar kinds of ideologies. Then you open up a new way of discover the gap and find out more, right? So I summarize, instead of asking how people can be motivated in organization, they should ask why people need to be motivated, right? So it's a the kind of ideological assumptions. Make it more meaningful in terms of your constitution, right? Fuel assumption. Fuel assumption is basically is you are using Difference. Uh, you try to do cross disciplinary study. Okay, cross disciplinary study. Okay. You try to change assumptions, and you try to develop alternate assumptions. How do you develop alternate assumptions? Is only thing is you don't have to do cross uh, cross disciplinary study. Okay. Why? Because when you do cross disciplinary study, different disciplinary disciplinary like for example medical psychology. Okay, for example, business. We are from different different kinds of field. So different uh, school of business have their own school of thoughts. School of psychology have school of, psych uh, school of thought in the psychologies. So when you merge these two uh, disciplines, indirectly, we embedded school of thought from different different uh, field to come a new uh, territory of research. Okay, sometimes you also can combine Two different school of thought, for example. Okay, as you know that in real world now, okay, we either in the past we either com collaboration, we either compete. But why not we talk about competition, combine collaboration and compete together as well, like Toyota Master, right? They are competitors, but they collaborate each other to deploy hybrid engine. Right? So we try to get there. So we try to see the merging of two words, competition, okay? United and the Scott squad already, okay? Then we try to find out what are factors contributing the company engaging in competition, okay? In conclusions, huh? so identifying and changing assumption under the theories, okay, is, is a very faulty, is a quite high level of research gap. Okay, which is prominent, advocated by Everson. Okay, and uh, so how to find a research gap? You must also how to do the SLR systematic literature review. Okay, uh, I want to uh, uh, give you some extra information. In order to do a research gap, I didn't find the research gap. Type research gap might not be sufficient. Okay, you must know how to. Okay, uh, what kind of approach? Do you animate gap such as to the SLR, systematic review, uh, such as to the 
uh, meta synthesis, such as do the meta analysis, right? So as a medical science, we use a lot of uh, we use a lot of meta analysis, okay, as uh, together with systematic literature review, okay, to discover the evident gap, to discover uh, methodology gap as well, okay. If sometimes is want to do a meta analysis, it's not an easy work because some statistic finding uh, are not disclosed. Uh, some find some uh, background response are different. Okay, so what we do is we do meta synthesis. Okay, meta synthesis is a way to discover uh, the gap, a little bit of qualitative approach. Okay, but okay, so I won't cover this thing in detail. If you're interested, you can look into uh, this kind of meta synthesis, uh, meta analysis, systematic review as a, a process to help you to identify the gaps from the assistant journal. Okay, so. So today I covered two things. When I talk about problematization and guest spotting, okay, uh, based on five typology assumption, a uh, problematization, based on three uh, mode of gap spotting, confusion, neglect, and application. I also talk about three uh, approach, Jepcop, Miller, and Mouse, okay, and uh, they develop six or seven type of research gap. Uh, they try to develop the, their model built on each others, okay. Uh, these are the sums good referencing. Okay, it may help you to read. Okay, so uh, I end my conclusion here. So any problem, I pass the floor to the moderator. Okay, uh, thank you, Doctor Koi, uh, uh, for the information and for the explanation that gave information for us and insight for the students as well. So let me summarize. So we on. Uh, we already learned how uh, what is research gap, and uh, and also the theoretical foundation of research gap. And we also uh, discuss about the uh, how to this uh, to spot yeah the, the research gap from various uh, experts. And the last uh, thing we learn is how to discover uh, research gap, the process through SLR meta analysis and meta synthesis. Uh, that's a uh, if I can uh, wrap up, yeah. Uh, so uh, we can uh, go to the next uh, session, the questions and answers. The first uh, session, we, uh, the first part of the questions and answer sessions, I will open for uh, three questions. Uh, next, when we have time, we, uh, I will open another three uh, questions. Okay. Uh, I will check whether there's... Uh, and rising in the participants. It's very long. Okay, is there any questions from uh, Tariusi or from Binus? Don't be afraid. I know that all of you, most of you, or some of you have questions about the research gap. Or maybe you can, uh, maybe if you have like uh, a research topic, you can also ask Buheni. to be discussed. Mm. Yeah. From Dark Sharon Tan Hui In. Oh, okay. He or uh, she raised hand, I think. Okay, I cannot see it. So, okay, uh, from Tar Tarsi, Sharon, you, you can uh, open your mic. Yeah. Sharon? Uh, Sharon for from Tarsi. Uh, we still cannot hear you. Or maybe 
the committee, can you open mic for Sharon? The microphone for Sharon. We are trying yeah. to uh, unmute. Okay. Okay. Sharon. Sharon? Sorry, I passed wrong already. <clears throat> we wait for Sharon and also if you uh, have another questions students we have three. We have three opportunities. One is Sharon. We have still another two questions. We press wrong, uh, Bu Henny. Yeah. Sharon chat on oh, okay. box that she press wrong already. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. If the students uh, do not have question questions, maybe from the lecturer. I know some lecturers here. Okay. Good morning, Ibu Heni. Okay, Pak Toto. Yeah. Silakan, Pak. Okay. Uh, to Doctor Quack, I have one question. Perhaps it is. Uh, necessary for our student, how uh, we, our student, do the good gap analysis first? Uh, can you explain the step by step so we can finally uh, get the research topic? Okay, uh, actually I have uh, uh, another slide, okay? This talk about how to developing gap analysis using the SLR, right? Uh, Okay, uh, before we go that, it, uh, we have to distinguish first. Um, are you intend to, whether student intend to do qualitative or quantitative, right? If students intend to do mm. qualitative, normally their gap are quite different. Their gap primarily more to the uh, knowledge gap, uh, uh, industrial uh, practical, academic practical gap, something like that. So they try to look into the process. They try to look into components perspective of the gap. Okay, because they do qualitative, they can get insights. If they intend to go to more detail of uh, quantitative base, they are more look into the conflicting, competing kinds of gaps. Well, it's more to because you only can do completing and conflict, uh, com uh, uh, completing uh, explanation kind of gap, provided you have uh, scientific evidence uh, to prove that the outcome are different from each other. Okay, so it's uh, for example, normally after I do a topic, for example, I found there's a difference between the findings of a uh, for like supply chain, supply chain agility topic. I found there is a uh, conflicting findings. So my next move is I have to decide whether I want to go to quantity or quality of mix. If I do, go, if I do quantity, then I will drill down to detail of supply chain agility. I do the SLR in detail. Okay, and find out what is a uh, different component dimension, uh, different statistical evidence, you no? Know, so that because my job will come out quantitative. If if my job is primarily for qualitative, then I'm I might use the different approach. Okay, I might use the uh, meta analysis or SLR. Okay, drill into uh, the the fundamental concept of supply chain agility, the component and the process. 
and then I try to link to a company, uh, do a case study, okay, to to enlighten my uh, to to come up my finding, to say that okay, these differences in empirical studies are due to a company adopt different approach in their process of agility, supply chain agility. Therefore, I like to come up this process, okay, to give a, a evidence, but from qualitative view. Okay, this is another approach. Okay, so it's all, it's all depend on uh, the the students' uh, ability, and uh, most of the accounting students, right, uh, for undergraduates, normally they do a very basic kinds of uh, uh, analysis. Uh, for example, for example, they might not go to adopt, uh, uh, for example, uh, phenomenological study, grounded case study, they don't go that detail. They just directly go to the operation, such as a conduct interview, focus group identity. Okay, this one basic one for them, for undergraduate. And uh, for, what, for for a current student who intend to do quantitative, then they will have to go to uh, do a normal uh, parametric and non-parametric test, a t-test ANOVA, uh, chi-square, like that. Okay, and basic kind of regression. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, is it possible for student to do triangulation or combination of research method? Uh, depend on your timeline. Some university only one semester. Some university have two yeah. semester. Uh, for those uh, for our experience, okay, uh, to guide student triangulation, the students must well train uh, in year two in terms of qualitative as well as quantitative research methodology. And most of the Asian students have a difficulty in linguistic languages, right? Mm -hmm. So when do a qualitative research, they have a hard time, okay? To do TEPA uh, analysis for qualitative, they, they know all these things, yeah. And the timeline might not be uh, enough for them for do mixed methodology for undergraduate. They can, but okay. I stress on them, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do normally one semester. <laughs> No, uh, no, no, no. What's the best not me? We recommend uh, uh, either one. Uh, mm. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank, uh, thank you, Pak Toto. Okay, so, you. If, so if uh, we only have one semester, what, what types of research uh, gap do you suggest, uh, Dr. Quack? Okay. For, for the students. For, for normally, for normally for undergraduates, uh, uh, for the result, once some okay, for one semester, it means that they do one, two, three, four, five to get uh, they okay. But may, uh, may I know that whether they are undergraduate, they study Mrs. methodology as one subject, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, after that, something, something year two or year three, then after that, yeah. they have one yeah. semester. So, in this case, uh, some university uh, might not encourage them to do gap analysis. Well, again, gap analysis mm -hmm. is quite tough for them. Okay, I have implemented gap analysis in my uni. Uh, it's really like some students can catch up, some students can catch up. Okay, it depends okay. on how strong the uh, cognitive ability of the student. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, okay. Uh, it's same thing for the, uh, because normally as you know that in order to, uh, in the quantitative research, in the quantitative research, in mm -hmm. order to answer gap, the primary conceptual model to answer gap will be moderator and mediator. Mm -hmm. Okay, then the moderate meter, some students will find it very tough for them. Yeah. Right, okay, right. and some students will talk about mediation, right? Uh, they need to support with the theories, mm -hmm. uh, whereby students adapt the theories, and this is another challenge for them as well. So when it comes to supervision, yeah. okay, three things have to consider. Okay, is that require from? Is that require them to form a research gap? Number one. Number two, is that require for for them to use theory to develop the concept mm -hmm. framework. Number three, are they required to do uh, motivation and mediation in the concept framework? These are three key pillars that surroundings uh, are facing by the lecturers uh, in guiding students. And students also find it very difficult. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, therefore, some, some university, they, they, okay, last one but not least, the data and method structure equation modeling. Yeah, right. Okay. And some some will say using SPS fine with me. Some mm -hmm. are using the Amos or Smart PRS or whatsoever software, M plus software. Mm -hmm. uh, so it still depends on your student competency. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So normally I will select. So uh, those are students are ready to cope with to cope. Uh, then I I will tell them yeah you can go to beyond level beyond this level you can go to this level get mm-hmm. analysis and so on something where you can cope. Yeah yeah. Okay. Uh, we uh, have an one question from uh, Pik Har Wong. Uh, for master students, uh, how deep the gap needs to analyze? And then second, from the gap, we develop problem statement and research questions. How many hypotheses normally we need? Okay. First question, how deep of the research gap? Uh, what we consider is how, what is a concept, I'm more into is what is, how your gaps answer Add in the existing contribution. Okay, it's more important. Okay, you see, ah, uh, the gap. Okay, I don't. We don't expect to do multiple gap, lah. Impossible one. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the gap must be, must be solid, uh, unique, and had great contribution. This is more important. Mm-hmm. Okay, you can go to sometimes we develop gap so minute until uh, it loss of the contribution. It mm-hmm. make it so difficult to come up with a framework. Okay, so that is a balancing, balancing between uh, how deep the gap the gap is. The fundamentals go back is does is add value to contribution as a fundamental concept. Okay, um, if it, it if it does add value, whether through the gap uh, gap uh, spotting, whether through uh, prioritization is fine with it. Second question is deal with what? Sorry, second question. Uh, from the gap, we develop problem st- statement and research questions. Yep. How many hypotheses normally we need? It's go back. It's go back to your gap. Okay. If your gap, for example, if your gap is purely developed quantitative, quantitative gap, mm-hmm. then your gap will be primary. Is your research question might be one or two only. Okay, for example, what are the factor contributing to the uh, uh, internet edition? For example, you want to find a topic on internet edition, right? Okay, uh, something like that. And and you, uh, what is the profile of the demography? The one is descriptive RQ, descriptive is a question. Okay, so bear in mind, RQ got different types, huh? got influential, got inference research questions, got descriptive research questions, and so on. So normally, uh, for for master students, master by research. Right, uh, we want them to have. Uh, it's not an MBA program; it's a it's research program. So they have it's a it's a part part of the PhD program. Uh, so okay. half of PhD program. So we 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 want them to have a uh, minimum two. I mean, did yeah. two research question uh two, yeah. Uh, we don't expect it more, because the research question can be broad based, can be specific based. So when we do the when you do the master by research, uh, we expect students to give it a broad base research question, uh, research question attached mm-hmm. together, followed by a specific base research question. So easy for us uh, to develop a uh, guide hypothesis. In mm-hmm. terms of hypothesis, for master students, normally it's about, uh, for undergraduate, it's less than six. Okay, for master students, it's, it's around six to twelve or six to some some universities say six to ten, some some university say six, uh, six to eight, six to ten like that. Yeah, yeah because yeah. when you add in mediation moderation, uh, I guarantee you your your happiness is more than ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So don't develop so many gap. So when you develop so many gap, you have multiple research questions, then you have multiple hypotheses, your model very complicated. At that time, you cannot use SPSA anymore. You must use SEM. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, uh, that's a uh, big Harwong. Thank you for the questions. Uh, the one that you have to bear in mind from Dr. Quack, uh suggestion is that you have to uh, have the contribution not only the research gap, but only, uh, but also how the contribution of the research. How many hypotheses? It depends on uh, what situation and conditions mm-hmm. you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Another uh, one questions for this uh, session. While we wait, uh, I have a question for you, Doctor Quack. Uh, if we have different type of 
uh, research gap, uh, is it also differentiate uh, the the opportunities to publish in a different kind of journal? Yes, yes. Some journal require uh, depend on what kind of journal. Okay, some journal require methodology contribution. Some journal oh, okay. require uh, okay uh, conceptual. Con I mean the evident contributions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, as far as the top journal concern, uh, they prefer uh, they, they some of journal they they prefer you to to tell them, okay, uh, they go to multiple, they look for multiple contribution. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. how you need of a methodology, make your study more and en uh, enlightening, uh, more fruitful. What is the theories being used by use and does the theory valid or not? And uh, based on your gap analysis, does this an uh, innovative or not? So they look for multiple uh, analysis, uh, multiple write-ups from your report, from your thesis, uh, from your articles, as well for top journals, tier one journals, tier, okay. tier one tier, yeah. Q1 journal. Okay. Yeah, Thomson ISI this company. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. so basically, is uh, most of the normal journal, the student will bank on the uh, theoretical evidence. Okay, mm -hmm. so competing explanation or something like that, neglected something like that. And this is a very basic, basic entry point. Mm -hmm. uh, but top journal, no, uh, more than that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Um, okay, uh, maybe we can uh, close for the session, uh, answer and qu question and answer the first part. We can open for another three questions. From the next part. This is the uh, big opportunity for you to uh, ask questions, ask your problem in research. Maybe I will uh, count until. Bohemi? Yes. Can I ask a question? Yes, sure. Uh, Ibu, uh, introduce yourself, ya, Bu. Okay. Um, thank you, Bohemi. And hi, Dr. Quek. My name is Rindang. And I would like uh, to ask you a question about the applications of the theory. You said that um, one of the gap is whether we, we, whether we want to apply the theory into a different context, a different perspectives. Like, um, for example, I have, um, I have a case like um, uh, one, one theory normally used in a quantitative uh, research. And then uh, one of my students would like to implement it. Uh, they, uh, they want to use this kind of theory, but uh, for the different research approach, like a qualitative approach. So is it possible for them to, uh, to implement that? But, uh, and also uh, the, the reason why they would like to apply that kind of the theory in the qualitative research, because of in Indonesia, in our, in our context, there are uh, very limited um, existing studies about that. So, so that's why they would like to explore first about the situations of, the, uh, of our topics of their topics and then uh, after that uh, after the, the the qualitative research finish and then uh, they would like to move beyond to the uh, another uh, research perspectives so i think that's all my questions dr Quick. thank you very much yes so basically it's important to 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 understand that uh, Okay, uh, a lot. Of, okay, when you do a, for example, case study, you do case case study quality research. Huh? Okay, uh, we also adopt some theories actually in quality research. Uh, the purpose of them theory, uh, basically to help us, uh, to see the, uh, 
the open-ended questionnaire design is also to help us to, to see the likelihood of connection of different thematic in our data analysis. Okay. Uh, we use theory, some theories in quantitative research because uh, it might enlighten us in the future when do data analysis is able to help us to refine and you know, come out a new theory possible, okay? Uh, a new process you know, uh, to, to substantiate our findings to answer what we want to discover, okay? So it, it can be, it can be, it can be, it, it, it's a, because theory basically is basically is a reasoning, okay? As a reasoning, uh, when we do quality research, we also ask uh, reasoning, we also ask the, uh, how this process works A and B and C. When we talk about process A affect B, B affect C, I think involves certain kind of uh, uh, so-called framework and uh, modeling, but some theory as well. Yeah, it, it can, yeah. But the main outcome, the main outcome is you using this theory is primarily to help you to build another strong, uh, innovative uh, uh, phenomenon and framework and model and possible new theories as well. Yeah. Okay, thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Burindang. Uh, another two questions. We will wait for another two questions. From Tarsi. We so, have. so I like to add one point here. So for those students, okay, who want to do a good research gap, uh, they might mm -hmm. go through a process of a uh, literature review. But literature review, basically, uh, quite diverse. They cover conventional approach and uh, a current approach as well, right? You do a when you use a, a conventional approach, okay, called LR or. Oh, or normative or scoping review is not sufficient. Okay, most of the mm -hmm. under undergraduate students they use a normative review and scoping review, which is very preliminary and called conventional approach, and uh, whereby they try to uh, do the scoping review. Therefore, the review will be incomplete and so on. Okay, so normally mm -hmm. some university what they do is when they come to business research methodology, okay, they set this subject as a assignment based like a research proposal right so that mm -hmm. when it comes to research project one semester they they already have so-called one two three in hand right chapter one chapter two three in hand so-called production mm -hmm. review methodology so from that they revise and then when come to the last semester research project they are able to do the subsequent analysis so mm -hmm. uh, this is recommended students right you want to do a gap analysis uh, by doing gap analysis, the type, the concept, not sufficient, okay? Uh, yeah. You must support through, you must know the technique of conducting uh, literature review. Literature review, uh, for the new version, for the new version, okay, uh, for mm. business school, we use uh, a few authors, okay? Okay, mm -hmm. uh, Trendfield. Trendfield is one of the good authors, right? Mm -hmm. uh, tre uh, Trendfield and Devil. 1993, mm -hmm. and we, we also had PCOM, uh, PCOS model, okay. P-I-C-O-S, PCOS model. Uh, we do have ontological approach. Okay, there, are, there are four to five approach, okay? A conventional. We do have a, you, the other type of approach called uh, very niche market. Niche one is called uh, methodology review approach, okay? They only look into, they use methodology review, review approach to analyze the LR. This is a different high level. We call, we call meta synthesis, meta analysis. This one is another level. Uh, so, yeah. hmm. uh, so we, we have, have uh, Dr. Quack, we have uh, some questions from the students. Yep. Uh, uh, from uh, Chin Chun Yin, uh, when are both quantitative and qualitative methods beneficial? Which and one both beneficial? Hmm. Uh, both approach have their pro and con. Okay, uh, both of them. Okay, 
definitely, for example, if if you if, if you want to predict predict the outcome, uh, to form a you no know, to predict outcome, okay, uh, uh, and then the causal, then the quantitative will help you, okay. Mm -hmm. If you want to understand the process, you want to develop a so called the SOP, right? Um, okay, you want to get insight, then quant qualitative will help you. Yeah. So for commercial point of view, for commercial point of view, uh, when when young graduate go to markets, uh, some company prefer you to conduct two in one. Okay, but for example, go to interview client, what's going on, right? Uh, tell uh, tell the client uh, which process of delivery uh, they are not happy. Uh, which process of delivery uh, blocked down, blocked down, all these things. So that's why as a young graduate, they go to market, they, when they conduct market research, uh, as part of your key account uh, uh, golden clients, uh, um, they need to arm with all this kind of uh, insight, so quality. They must know the technique, how to ask questions, especially open-ended questions. Uh, they must know, able to uh, see the data uh, transcri uh, data transcribing, uh, to see which process or which uh, business process, uh, services pro service process is not well handled and well criticized uh, by the customer. Okay, this one quality. On top of that, they must also ask the client uh, which criteria, uh, which factors affect their cost, their satisfaction. That they, they want is quantity really. That's why okay, some you thank see, you. Uh, mm. uh, sorry. Uh, okay, thank you, Doctor Quack. We have uh, we should maybe we think uh, I think we can open another three questions, yeah, because we already have some questions in the group chat. Uh, the first one is can you explain the challenges related to gap analysis process in general? And the oh. second one, uh, we have uh Pikhar. Pikhar Wong uh, asks about how the software, what kind of softwares we normally use in uh, analysis, the qualitative or quantitative uh, research. And then I think we we will have one more. How do you ensure the reliability in the qualitative or quantitative research? Repeat again the third question. Uh, the last one is how do you ensure the, reliabil the reliability in qualitative or quantitative research in okay. Sofia? Okay, quality research. Okay, interesting question. Okay, what the challenge of developing gaps? Okay, challenge of developing gaps depend on a few factors. Okay, the skill of uh, conducting the peer review. Okay, uh, the skill set must have, right? Okay, uh, how to find the right articles, right time, uh, mm -hmm. okay. It's sufficient of database, very important. Okay, sufficient database, okay. Uh, I think most students, uh, they just go to Google Scholar, get information, yeah, yeah. okay. But the Google Scholar, be careful. Google Scholar, some of information, uh, they are normally Google Scholar, they quote the high cited, okay. High cited article in the, first of, uh, in, in the top. Right, so those articles, some of them, okay, uh, they might not have latest evidence, uh, latest uh, article published mm -hmm. in Google Scholar because it's under the uh, copyright of the database as Scopus or Science Direct or something like that. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I urge them not only to learn Google Scholar but go beyond Google Scholar because you know the updated latest publication or controlled by all these kind of Science Direct Scopus like that. Okay, so they. Mm -hmm. They will not appear on your Google Scholar one. Google is very new. Okay. Second thing is uh beside database, okay, the skill set. Next one is mindset. Mindset. Mm -hmm. You your mindset is very open and creative. Think of box. Okay. You need to have uh and in order to do that, you need to have very strong team. Okay. Uh if you do a research project as a team, right, for normal undergraduate or whatever. Uh, your member must really challenge each other, okay? And really think out, like, for example, understand what is ontology, okay, all these things. Next challenging point is you must understand the philosophy of uh, the ontology concept, experience concept, and so on, okay? Uh, those are the important, uh, and if you are very strong in quantitative, 
you want to find a gap on quantitative, you must be very strong in data analysis uh, technique. You must be well in statistics. Okay, through the statistic analysis, discover the gap. This one is another level. Okay, uh, when when some students facing these difficulties, okay, when they come to find gap, they don't know statistic, so they only see chapter two and chapter four. Okay, the chapter yeah. four, they only see conclusion. I have to support the full stop with you. <laughs> At the end, I say, what's going on? <laughs> okay, uh, these are the problems, uh, because uh, that's why it's in com in general cognitive level. Numerical skill level, okay, resources, okay, are required to make the, the thing work. Uh, not but not least the time, no last minute work, <laughs> okay. <laughs> or didn't do last minute work one, so I pay them, okay. Second for software, okay, software for qualitative normally a few lah, okay. The free one will are tatisa, okay. The paid one will be like for example NVIDIA lah, okay. Yeah. But bear in mind that. The quality software does not, is basically is a software to help you to see the likelihood of the connection of the words. Mm -hmm. okay? But it doesn't help you for interpretation. Okay? So you have to go back to your human mind. Okay? To see, they only tell you frequency of appearance, the likelihood of this word and this word. So it's go back to the researcher how to construct the script, so called, uh, in the chapter four. So for for accounting, for accounting and account for accounting student uh, and finance students, the software they use normally got few. Okay. Mm -hmm. One is for example the SPSS they can use. Uh, they can use uh, financial software. Okay. E-view, depend on mm -hmm. the topic. Sometimes they use e-view. For management and marketing, we seldom use e-view. Okay. But they use e-view. Uh, some some lecturer go to SAS. But you might not know how to use SSR. Okay. Okay. Even very common, as very, very common for accounting and finance students for undergraduate. Uh, for for okay. For quantitative, normally uh we use SVS. Okay. Uh, subsequently we go to advanced as structure equation modeling. Okay. So you can make a few lah, M plus curve, okay, whether uh Amos curve, smart PS, whatsoever. Okay. Uh Next one, reliability and validity. Bear in mind that reliability and validity concept for quality and quantity are two different things. Are two different things. Okay. Uh, for reliability and validity for quantitative. Okay. For you want to do a basic exploratory uh, uh, quantitative uh, exploratory level, you can use SVS. Okay. To do the uh, reliability and validity, such as to compile alpha, okay, do the expert factor analysis. If you want to do the advanced level, then you might use structure equation modeling. Structure equation modeling, uh, you talk about measure model. Measure model will help you to check about reliability, uh, okay, and validity to the CFA. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they all based on statistical uh eager to conclude. Quality different. Quality, uh if you look for Google Scholar or some some books, uh, they got four to six criteria. Okay, you have to follow the criteria to do a lot of triangulation, you do a lot of uh, 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 all this, you have to follow all this criteria in order to, to prove that reliability where is match. For that's why is when you do quality quantity band, right? Reliability and validity there are two different concepts uh, for these two approach. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Quack, for the sharing and the in, uh, insightful uh, information for us. I think uh, this one, uh, this the last question is already uh, our last session. And in, in the last session, uh, I'm sorry, we cannot go through the another questions uh, in the chat box because we already have a time limit. Uh, we, we are very pleased to have uh, Dr. Quack with us today. And hopefully, uh, I hope uh, all of you, the students, uh, can uh, now um, have insight in uh, research gap and how to do research uh, gap uh, spot properly. Uh, hopefully also it helped you in the final project. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us in the collaboration from uh, Venus and uh, Tarsi. Hopefully the collaboration uh, can also 
uh, happen in the future, sustain in the future. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Quek, and also all of the uh, team for, from Tarsi and Venus. Uh, I have very uh, glad to be uh, here uh, guiding all of you. And, and now uh, I will return the floor to the committee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kwek Chonling and Mrs. Henny Kuniawati for the insight. I believe this information would be essential for all of us here, especially to improve our knowledge on research method. And now for the last part, we are going to have a digital photo shoot. So please make sure to turn your camera on, please. Uh, Jonathan, will you help us to take a picture? Okay. Please give the sign. From the first page, okay. We have 28 page. Yes. Wait a little bit more. Archie, could you please send the link? Yes, go. I already send it on the chat, on the chat room in this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And for everyone, please can fill the reg for the registration and feedback on the chat. Thank you. Okay, done for the photo. Okay, thank you, Jonathan. Uh, so uh, please, everyone, fill out the uh, evaluation form on the chat box. And well, that wraps up our morning. On behalf of Accounting Study Program, Binus University, and Tunku Abdurrahman University College, I would like to thank Mr. Kwek Chodling, Mrs. Henny Kuniawati, Mr. Kevin Deniswara, all the committees, and all of you participants for making time in your busy schedules to join us here this morning. It's been our pleasure to host this event, and I wish you all a pleasant day. See you on another event. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget to fill the form before you left the Zoom meeting or uh, YouTube meeting. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Okay.